Hi guys, how are you? It's Miss Christine, and um, I just am really excited about what we're going to work on this week. Um, I heard that some of you are studying birds right now, and I actually tried really hard to do a bunch of different kinds of birds, um, but that didn't quite work out. So I actually have sketches for um, different, a whole bunch of different kinds of birds, and I'm thinking maybe I'll do a whole unit on that at some point. Um, but for right now, we're going to do a drawing of a hummingbird, and um, specifically, we're going to do a hummingbird, but it's sort of like a little, I don't know, it's a piece more about hummingbirds. So we're actually going to draw a hummingbird, but also, you know, a flower that it would um, drink the nectar from, and also a nest and some eggs, and I think a feather. I think that's all that's in there. But anyway, um, it's kind of like little fun facts about hummingbirds, and um, I think you guys are gonna have fun with this one. Now, this one, I got a little carried away, and um, I made it really nice. It looks really nice, but it might be a little bit complicated. Um, so if you guys have any trouble with it, please feel free to text me or email me. Um, and I'm more than happy to help you out, okay? Um, but also, if it just seems like it's a little bit too complicated, you know, you don't have to put all of the elements in there. Um, you can simplify it. You can maybe just do the bird and just have it flying, you know, on a blue sky with clouds in the background or something and not even do the other pieces. But because I did this very elaborate drawing, I also did want to show how I did the drawing, you know, in case anybody did want to take the time to do all of the elements that I did myself. Okay. So anyway, so this is a little bit of a longer video than I normally do. And when you're done with this one, you're going to end up with just an ink drawing. It's going to be beautiful, but it's going to be an ink drawing. And um, next week we're going to color it in, okay, with watercolor. Um, now, if you also would like to do um, something else and just finish it this week and color it, that's fine as well. But just so you know, I've already um, filmed the video for the watercolor and I basically just broke it up into two parts. So this week would be the drawing and inking in of the image. And then next week would be the coloring part. Okay. So anyway, I hope that you guys have fun with this. I really had a lot of fun working on it, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Um, so let's let's get in, and um, I hope you have fun, okay? Thanks. Okay, guys, so we're going to start our hummingbird drawing. Um, as always, we're going to put our guidelines in real lightly um, down the middle of the page. And then this way, horizontally. And that's so that we can divide our page into four sections so that we know where our objects belong. And now I want you to make a little dot about an inch, a little bit less than an inch, but about an inch up from this intersection right here. And that's going to be, I'm gonna say like the front of his face where his beak would attach to his face. Okay, and so from there, we're gonna go up and we're gonna make a little rounded head. And come back down, almost just kind of like an upside down V, but rounded at the top, like a little hill. Um, and over here, we're gonna add a couple little feathers in. And then we're gonna go down and make his, his neck like that. And then we're going to go a little bit lower, kind of like that, and make a curved line that goes like that. Okay. This almost makes a diamond shape. So if that's easier for you, you could just make like a diamond shape right here. Okay. And then when you're done, just erase this line right here. Okay, and now for his body, we're gonna go down and we're gonna make a little, kind of like a little swoop. And that's the front of his belly. 
And back here, we're actually just gonna keep a straight line going. It's gonna be angled, but it's gonna be a straight line. And that's gonna go down to the bottom of like his tail feathers. And actually I'm looking at this and I'm thinking maybe his belly should be a little bit bigger. A little bit more like that, maybe. Okay, and then down here, we're gonna curve down kind of like that to make his tail feathers. Okay, and then he's gonna have two sets of wings. His first set is gonna be up here, just a little bit higher than this line. Um, about, I'm gonna say right here. And they're just gonna arch up. They're not gonna go higher than his head, okay? But they're just gonna kinda go back a little bit. Um, and then basically, you know, just kind of down like that. We can make little feathers. Okay, or like little little round, like half circles. We'll get more detail in there later, but just for placement, that's about, you know, where the feathers would be. And then his second little wing, um, he has a shoulder. It's about right here. It's kind of like a backward C. And then from there, It almost looks a little bit like a seashell. Like we're gonna come up like that, or kind of like a rounded triangle, and we're gonna come down like this, and then it's gonna be kind of the same shape with the um, with the little feathers that kind of come down to here. Okay, so they're both um, angled lines on this side here, and you don't have to make them perfect. You know, mine are really messy right now. I'm gonna go back and clean them up later. But this is just to get everything in position, okay? Um, I am going to erase that line right there, though. Because this wing um, is in front of his back, so we're not going to see that line of his back right there. Okay. Actually, I'm feeling like I still want to change this belly a little bit. Maybe like that. Anyway, something along the lines of that. We can play with it a little bit more as we go along. And he does have like little feet that are down here too. Little, little things like that. Okay, now over here, we're gonna get his beak. Um, it's gonna be about an inch long, coming out this way. And if you remember over here on this line, we didn't have like a an exact point. There was a little, this was a little bit higher than this line. Um, and that's because his beak kind of tapers from his face. It's not like an exact point. So something kind of like that. And we can erase this midline out of there now too. Okay. And then if you go from like the center of his beak, between the center of his beak and then not quite to this hump yet, so kind of like about right here. We're gonna make a little circle for his eye. Basically something like that, okay? And guys, you know, you see that as I'm drawing this with you, I'm going through and making it you know, making corrections as they go along. I want you guys to do the same thing. You know, if you draw it and then it doesn't quite look how you want it to look, go back and, and evaluate, you know, see what doesn't quite look right and make some little changes, okay? I do this all the time. And there's nothing wrong, wrong with that at all. It would be actually kind of bizarre if you could perfectly draw exactly what you wanted on the very first try. Um. Okay, so honestly, that's the basic shape of our bird. Um, we can come back in and do more detail work later, but I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Um, maybe just shade in his eye a little bit, just cause it looks weird. Um, 
and he will look better after we do some more detail work on him, okay? Um, but now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna draw a little feather. I'm gonna start with just kind of like a little curvy line, a real simple curvy line like that. Really, you can't mess this up too much. This is pretty easy. Um, just any old curvy line. And then, I don't know, pick a point about one third of the way down from the top. So about right there. And we're gonna just kind of make lines that go out in a fan from that. Okay, that's the top part of his, his feather. And now this part down here is really kind of fuzzy and fluffy. Um, and that's hard to do with pencil or with ink, but um, basically just, um, you know, for the feathers, for each of the individual feathers, you're gonna make just a, a kind of a, a little bit of a wiggly line or curvy line. And then, um, just make like little horizontal lines coming out of it. Or, I mean, not horizontal, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so make your squiggly line and then have diagonal lines, almost like a V, coming off of the feather, okay? And these can go all different directions. Um, your little lines are gonna get shorter as they go near the tip, okay? And they can cross each other. Um, you can have a lot, you can have a few. It's really up to you. But this whole section here is supposed to look really kind of fuzzy and fluffy. Have some that go down. And this doesn't need to be perfect either because we're gonna go over this with ink later and we can perfect it, you know, as we go along. Okay guys, so I'm gonna let you guys pause this because um, you don't need to watch me do all of this and that way the video won't take quite so long okay so just keep on doing this guys until your feather is filled up and then we'll continue with the rest okay okay guys so we have our, our bird and our feather and now we're going to make a couple little flowers um to make our flowers we're going to make kind of a curvy oval kind of a curvy oval um and then go out to a point and back. Kind of like a triangle, a long triangle. And then we're gonna have straight lines that come out. And there should be like a little ball at the end. Okay, and then you can maybe put a couple of little lines in here if you want. My next one I'm gonna have starting at the same point, but it's gonna be a little bit curvier. I'm gonna have go Kind of like that. And I'm gonna make that one curvy on the edge with some lines coming out of the middle. Some little balls on them. And then I'm gonna do one more, but I'm gonna have it a little further. I believe that this is a type of honeysuckle. I forget the exact variety, but I've heard of it before and I've seen it. I just can't recall the name. Okay, so those are our flowers. Um, you know, guys, at this point, let's go ahead and erase our guidelines because I think we're, we're pretty good. You know, our, our major objects are where they belong. So um, let's go ahead and erase these lines and we can erase them out of the bird too. And out of our flowers. Okay. Okay. 
So now for our little flowers, we're going to put like a little ball at the end of each of our stems or of our flower. And then we're going to make one big stem that's going to connect all of them. So it's going to go down like this. Kind of like that. And our leaves can be any shape you want. For mine, I made kind of a curve. Because the most important thing is that they meet at the top into a point and they come together. Okay. And then this one down here, I just made curvy. And it meets, you know, it starts at the same point here and separates and then comes back. If you want to, you can put like a small, like a triangle almost to kind of indicate another leaf further down. But that's really up to you. Now over here, we're going to do this cute little bird's nest and a, um, a little branch that it's sitting on. So let's start with our nest. Pick a good spot, you know, look at your, your page and figure out where a good spot for the nest would be. I think on my composition right now, maybe like about right here would be good. Okay. So I'm going to start with just a small, um, kind of like a oval, circle oval for my nest. These nests are so tiny and the eggs are tiny too. Um, so inside of that, I'm going to make a little egg. I'm going to try to make it bigger on one side than the other. I didn't do a great job on that one, but I can fix it. And same with this one. But this one, we're going to skip a little tiny bit because it's going to be hidden behind this front egg, kind of like that. Okay, something like that. Just two tiny little eggs. And this oval that we made is going to be the inside of the nest. And then we're going to make a bigger circle. Oh, it's not exactly a circle, but kind of a circle. Um, it's going to go down a little bit. And this is going to be the outside of the nest. Okay. So up here, it just kind of goes around the edge. But then over on the left, it goes out a little wider. And then it goes down because that shows the depth of the, the nest. And then around this, you know, we're going to have just some little lines to kind of show maybe the direction that everything is kind of woven. And there's going to be moss in here. So maybe just make like little, I don't know. I don't even know what kind of shape this is. Just little little things to kind of be your moss. And, and we'll fix that more when we put the color in. It'll make it look more realistic. And then over here we have like this lichen stuff, um, which we're gonna basically just make as curvy, it's almost like a long, skinny, curvy, I don't know, rectangle shape kind of but you can have them in different directions too. It doesn't have to be just up and down. Okay, and, and you could also make them just in different shapes if you wanted to. Like it could be a little bit more circular instead of rectangular. Um, and then on this side, we're gonna put some like on the edge. So it's not even gonna be like a full circle because it's gonna attach to the nest right there. Okay. Um, you know, really that's about it for the nest for now. The rest comes in when we color it. So I'm gonna leave that. And now I'm gonna make a branch that it sits on. So I'm gonna come over here to the left and just swoop down underneath the nest. And then I'm gonna continue it out over here. And then I'm going to do the other side. And this is going to get thinner and thinner as we come down towards the edge here. And its branches are interesting. Um, for the main part, you know, just make it whatever shape you want. It can kind of just be loose and flowing. That's fine. Um, but then the way that the 
actual branches are, um, we're going to have like little growths, I'll say, like on one side, but only on one side. Most branches or most leaves, you would have something on both sides. This, we're just going to do it on the one. And then each branch is going to be a little bit smaller. And we'll have less, well, either less or the same amount as the row, row above it. Okay, and we'll have one that comes down here. Like that, maybe two on this one. Maybe three on this one. And technically the one that's closest to the stem should be longer. And they would get shorter and shorter as they go down. I'm going to put one more back over in here. Or actually, you know what? I bet you that's the same branch here that's underneath of our nest. So we'll continue this, this branch that we have here over to this side, like that. We're gonna have two more branches up here. want it to go a little bit in front of this branch so just kind of like that okay so there we go there's the basics of our drawing now I also want to write the word hummingbird up here. Now guys, you can write hummingbird however you want to. If you just want to print, that's fine. If you know cursive and you want to do regular cursive, that's fine. Um, I've been kind of playing around with um, doing kind of some fancy writing. Um, I mean, I guess it's it's cursive, but it's more. it looks a little bit more like calligraphy. So if you want to copy mine, you are more than welcome to. I think, um, no, I'll just do it along with you. I was going to say, I'll put, I'll put a picture up in a second and then you can pause on it if that's easier for you, if you want to copy it. But I'm just sort of drawing the way that I do this. I don't just, you know, do cursive. Like when you're, when you're writing, you normally don't really think so much about your letters. And I'm thinking about every single piece of these letters. I'm, um, really drawing them with little tiny strokes, just like I would draw anything else. Um, this part of my M is curved a little tiny bit. And then I start down here and my first hump is, um, it doesn't go all the way up and it doesn't go all the way down. But then my second hump goes up higher and goes down all the way to the bottom. Okay. And then it has a little branch that goes up and my second M kind of curves a little bit too. And then the same thing, my first hump doesn't go all the way up or all the way down, but my second one goes up and down. And then we curve up to an I, which also curves a little bit and comes up. And then my N curves a little bit. Okay, and then my G. My G is fun. I just did a small circle. Small circle, okay. And then I let it swing way down to fill in this space that's down here. 
coming and then all the way up to fill in some of the space up here. And then I go right around it into a circle for the bottom part of my B. And I loop around one more time to go up to my I. I'm gonna come down. Then for my R, I'm gonna loop around and come down. And then start a circle for my D and go up and around and out. And then put my little dots in. So at this point, guys, why don't you stop and just take a look at your image and make sure that it looks exactly how you want it to look. You know, clean anything up that you want to be cleaned up. We're gonna go in and put some more detail and stuff in, um, and then we're gonna go over it with ink. So um, just make sure that the, your basic shapes are how you want them um, before we do any more detail work, okay? Okay, guys, so I want to put a little bit of this detail in here now. Um, I'm going to put this little line in here between his top and bottom beak. And I want to put some little dots up here on the top of his head. Okay. And these little dots are going to be bigger towards the top of his head, um, like towards this line. Then as they come away, they're going to get smaller and maybe more spaced out. I don't have the picture of the actual hummingbird in front of me. Um, and I'm not sure which variety this is. Maybe you guys um, know more than I do on um, what kind this is. And actually, if, um, if there's a different type of hummingbird, you know, if you are a hummingbird expert and you know the different varieties and you want to color yours different and do a different type, that's completely fine. Um, but this is just what I did for mine. And I made these little dots. They kind of like come around the side of his face. And then they come over here to like his where his wing is. These little dots. So I'm just going to kind of keep this pattern up. You could also do like little lines to kind of show the direction of his, his feathers. Okay, and then down here, we're just going to do some little strokes. This is like a little bit of shadowing. And over here, actually, we're going to start to have indications of actual feathers. So we're going to kind of have these like little curved lines all the way down to about right here. Now over here for our feathers, let's finish this out a little bit more. So we have this top feather and then we have this little hook here. We're going to stop right there. Yeah. And then we're going to take our next one, like maybe from this point here and go down like that kind of in front of that other feather. Bring this side around Then we're going to start with the next one and kind of like go like overlap sort of. Okay guys, so a thing happened. My pencil broke and somehow in the process of sharpening my pencil, I got pizza sauce all over my um, my drawing. So um, there's that. Um, we're gonna ignore that for right now. Okay, so let's finish this.
we're going to sort of do the same thing with this one. Um, I'm going to arch that up a little bit more. And basically, we're going to take the curve from the from the one side and then kind of curve up a little bit. And these are all going to angle up towards this center, like kind of ball area. I'm going to call it his shoulder, but I'm sure that's not what it's actually technically called. Um, okay, and then his little feathers down here are just going to kind of curve around, come down and curve in. Okay, we'll firm up his back a little bit. And there we go. Um, in this area down here, we can kind of just have a few lines to kind of show like the direction of his. And these leaves, we can put a line that goes down the center. And here I have my, my, my pizza sauce. Sometimes things happen. I will note it wasn't my pizza, which is why you guys should always clean up after yourselves when you eat because other people might make messes accidentally not knowing that you left food out. Okay. Anyway. Let's see this one up here. We'll go like that. And down here. And then I don't really know the, the vein pattern for this, so I'm just going to make little lines. I'm not really even sure what type of plant this is. I think it's a honeysuckle, but I'm not positive. Anyway, so we're going to basically leave it like that. Um, and now what I want you guys to do, again, make sure that everything looks right. Erase all the pencil lines that you don't want to be there. Um, and make sure that it looks right. If, it, if you're not happy with how it looks, you, you know, go in and tweak it a little bit. And if you're not quite sure, maybe you can ask somebody else that's around if they have any suggestions. Um, actually, you're always free to um, text me. Your parents um, have my cell number. Um, and I'd be more than happy to help as well. But I'm sure that you guys are doing just fine. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave that there. And now... I want you guys to get either your Sharpie or your Micron pen, whichever you like using the best. Um, so pause this, go get your, your pens and come right back, okay? Okay guys, so I'm not gonna do this whole thing with you as far as the ink goes, but I do want you to ink over the, the whole drawing, okay? Um, but specifically though, I wanna do this bird with you um, because I think there are some interesting things that we can do with him with our pen. Um, so let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to do this center line here. And then this bottom edge. Okay. When we do his little eye, I want you to leave a spot right in the center. Outline it first. And then kind of go in circles in. And leave a little spot in the center for like a little highlight. Okay. Um, then let, let's finish outlining his head. And back here we just have like a couple little feathers. And then straight down his back to his wing. Okay. Now... We're gonna make this the darkest right along this edge. It's kind of like a shadow. So we're gonna kind of just fill in with lots of kind of dots. For my younger kids, if you guys don't want to do like extra detail and stuff, or you know, if you're happy just the way it is, um, you can certainly at this point, just um, go over your image with your pen, go over all of your your um, pencil marks with your pen and um, and then color it in however you want. 
I want to um, go ahead though and show how I did some of the detail on mine just in case some of the kids want to do more detail. Um, and now I have a kitten attacking me. This is Hermione. Hermione, say hi. Oh, there she is. Okay. So, again, um, sorry about that kitten interruption. Um, we're just going to kind of have these dots, but I want it to be darkest, like along this back side of his, his body here. So the dots are going to be bigger and closer together, and then they're going to get smaller and more spaced out as we go along. Kind of, I mean, what we did with our pencil, but I guess I'm just trying to explain it a little bit better. And you'll see as I'm going over top of it, I'm not necessarily going over top of every mark that I did before. Um, that just seems very complicated to me. Maybe that's just the way I am. I don't know. But, um, you know, if that is too much for you to try to go over every single little dot the way that you had it before, um, you know, just do the same type of pattern. And then um, we can go back and erase the pencil marks later. And that would be fine. Okay, so now over here, um, I'm going to do real lightly, like almost so, like I'm using the side of my pen. I'm not using the top, I'm using the side, almost like at a 45 degree angle, and I'm barely um, making a mark. I'm making tiny little, more like gestural lines to kind of show um, the, the flow and the direction of the, the fur and uh, for the feathers and his body in general. Now over here, I'll put a little bit more pressure on and do these dots again. Okay. And then we'll start doing these little sweeping things or curved lines. I'm just doing kind of that same shape over and over. And I'm doing some bigger curved lines and some smaller, but it's the same thing. Okay, and along here, I'm just gonna lightly just draw some little directional lines. And through here, I'll do some of those straight lines that we were talking about. Okay, and I think that's about it. Let me do the front side of his belly here. And put his little feet down here. Okay, now with his feathers, this also is something that I wanted to show you in particular. What we're going to do is we're going to go right to the top here. And we're going to basically make a line right down the middle of his feather. And then what we're going to do is the side that's on top, we're going to color that whole bit in black. So this whole section here. Oh, and by the way, I'm using a Micron, um, what is this? A zero three, zero three pen to color this in. Um, you guys can use whatever um, whatever you have, but um, make sure that it's waterproof. So either Micron or um, Sharpie, preferably, or if you have some other kind of waterproof ink, that's fine too. Okay, so I'm not going to make you watch me do all of these. Um, let me finish coloring this one in. And basically all of the, the other feathers are going to be done in the same manner. Okay. So we're going to start right here at the, on the tip and go down through the center of the feather and then outline that top part and color this part in, okay, on every one of them. 
and I outlined these just to make things quicker just so I could show you. But what I'm going to do now, just to give them a little bit of detail, is I'm going to do sort of the same type of thing that we did here, where I'm going to use as little pressure as possible and kind of use the side of the, the pen, kind of like a 45 degree angle thing, and just try to make just like a little bit of texture, kind of, just some little marks. Okay, we're also gonna do a lot of shading over on this thing. So we're just gonna kind of go around and make some little marks, kind of like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing up here, like on the edges of these little feathers up at the top. Maybe we'll do like some I don't know just like little half circles and you know what maybe back behind here maybe we put some shadow in behind these feathers nice little body so maybe we make a couple more little marks over here to kind of be like that shadow and I'm also going to put some more shadow now along this back edge. Okay, so these lines aren't really feathers or anything. This is just light and shadow. So make them stronger, you know, near, near his back and they can kind of fade. As you kind of come, up, come around the side. Same really with the back of his head. Okay. I just realized that he has like a little I'm not really sure what this is, but like a little circle right there. Um, I'm going to put some little dots around his eye, too. I don't remember now why I did that, but in the first one I did, so I'm going to do it again on this one. And he also has like a little bit of texture on his fur here. He has some like little dots that come down. Maybe down here. And then these tail feathers. So I've got this whole shadow thing going along here. This tail feather here is going to be shadowed. And I think we're going to do more of that pattern that we did on our first set, where it's kind of like half shadow and half light. My little guys, you are probably really done, and that's totally okay, okay? I want each of you to go at your, your level and do what you're comfortable with. And if you're just ready to paint or draw or color, you know, you can do that too, or fast forward to the section where I do that, okay? Um, let me see. Okay, one last thing, guys, on our little bird. Okay, these feathers that we have over here, I want to... Make some little lines, real light. I'm not using a lot of pressure, but just diagonal lines that kind of go from the center um, out towards the, the kind of like the left side of the feather. So kind of like angling out. Okay, here we go. So there's my bird couple more quick things. So like I said, we are going to just outline everything. So just plan on that. Um, on this feather though, um, these feathers here, I want them to be a little bit um, thicker. There's, you can have like space in between them. That's fine. But I want to have some stronger kind of like solid black lines with space in between them.
but something kind of like that. Okay. And then these other little feathers, these more fluffy feathers, I want you to do more of that technique that we did where it's, um, where you're kind of using the side of the pen and not so much, you know, but when I did these, I had a tighter grip and was pressing down hard. Here, you know, I've loosened up a little bit. Um, and I'm just kind of, I just want these to be soft and fluffy. So lots of little strokes maybe without too much space in between them, but also not too dark. Okay, and that makes them have a little bit of a softer appearance. I'll do a couple more and then I'll move on to something else just to show you um, different techniques that I used for mine, okay? And also on this feather here, um, this line right down the center, I did not color that, I left that white. Um, and then eventually I put like a, a light line in the middle, but there's kind of a white space where all of these meet. So for right now, I just want to leave that open. Okay. But you can do all of these feathers and just, just do them light with lots of little strokes to make them look nice and fluffy our eggs. I think those are important. Okay, our nest. So I'm going to outline just the, the left side of both of these eggs. And then I'm going to pretend that there's like some lichen or maybe it's a shadow. I'm not sure exactly what, but I'm just going to do some kind of squigglies in here to make it look like there's something maybe underneath those eggs. Okay. And on this side, I'm gonna do some softer lines that are more like just regular shadow. So this is gonna be like the shape of the nest. And remember that this inner, li this inner line of my circle is the inside of the nest. So right now we're not gonna go beyond that. We're just gonna get some shading in here And then we'll move on to another part. Kind of like that. Now we're going to do this top part of the nest. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to outline all this like lichen-y stuff. Um, maybe like outline some moss. Now the moss can be really any shape. Um, this stuff here is more like kind of the bumpy. The bottom we can do some shadowing on. And then we're just going to do some simple little lines up here just to give it a little bit of texture. Remember they get smaller um, as we go out. Something kind of like that. Okay. And then we can just put the branch in like we normally would. Okay. Now the word hummingbird is the last thing that I want to kind of show you. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do, actually, I am gonna have you guys pause this. Because the very first thing that we, we do is we literally just outline the whole thing, okay? Just like I'm doing right now with my H. And um, so I want you to do that. I want you to go ahead and outline your word if you're doing it the way that I did. Go ahead and outline it and then come back, now okay? what I'm gonna do, and you know, if you want to do this, just do it right along with me. Okay, I'm basically going to just thicken um, the down strokes and a few of the curves, but I'll have to show you which ones, okay? Um, in fact, I want to make that a little bit thicker. So I'm not going to do like this curve. I'm just going to do this straight part right here.
And guys, and if you don't want to do this, just fast forward to the next section where um, we'll start doing the color, okay? Um, although really, this does make a nice black and white drawing, so if you even just wanted to leave it as just an ink drawing, I think that would be perfectly fine. Um, but if you want to do the color, and if you don't want to do this, just um, skip forward, okay? That's completely fine. So I'm just doing like little strokes and I'm trying to make this thicker, like in the center part. Okay. I think that's good for the H. Well, no, actually, you know what? I'd like this side to be the same width as this. So I'm going to make it a tiny bit thicker. But I'm going to have this one still end kind of in points. But this middle part is going to be thicker. Okay, now on my U, again, the down strokes, and I'm going to stop about in the center of that curve. So over here, it's going to be thick, and then I'm going to bring it down kind of like to a, a point. I'm going to blend in with my original line when I get to the bottom of that little hump there. Okay, so on my M, I'm going to do the same thing with this thick um, down stroke. And this thick downstroke. And over here, I'm going to start in this curve, and I'm going to start right on the same line, but then I'm going to make it thicker as I come down here. And then I'm going to round this bend, and I'm going to blend it in again. Kind of like that. And you can make these as thick as you want or as thin as you want, or you could just not do this at all. Um, I just think it adds a little something, so I enjoy doing it, and I thought, well, I'll show you guys how to do it, and you can decide if you want to do it or not. My pen is starting to die a little bit. Generally speaking, though, I try to keep all of the widths about the same. Okay, so like all of the thick parts should be about the same thickness. Okay, so the down stroke, and then this middle part of the M, and that can go up to this little curve. Again, the eye, make the eye thick, and we'll bring it down here. Okay, now on our G, this left side of the curve, we're going to thicken. Okay, and then this down stroke. So we're going to kind of curve in here, and then the whole down stroke will be thicker. And we're just going to take this right to that curve 
and stop. So it kind of blend it in. That's going to be skinny and then when we come up here we're going to thicken this down stroke then we'll blend it in on the curve okay then that part's going to be skinny and then our left curve over here is going to get wider. Like that. And then the downstroke over our eye. And this left curve on the R. And then this downstroke over here. And then on our D, we're going to do this left curve. And this left side of our downstroke. And then we'll blend it in right there on the curve. Okay, so there is my word, hummingbird. And you can play around with it if you want, um, when you're done, you know, just to smooth out any little bumps or anything. But that's basically what I did. So I'm going to just stop this right here. And if you want to, you can pause it and finish up yours to try to make it look, you know, like this or, or not. You can do your own thing. But anyway, this is what I have. Oh, I also put these words in. Um, you can pause this and copy this down if you want to um or you can choose other words or not put them in at all but I was kind of describing our nest um I read that hummingbirds make their nests out of feathers moss lichen mm -hmm. cypress branch um and it's a cup shaped nest um they also use dandelion like the um the white fuzzy part of the dandelion um after it's yellow and then it turns white they use that part they also use spider silk, which expands with the growth of the babies, so it helps the nest to grow with once the babies start growing. Um, they also use cotton fibers, bark, leaves, and fur. And the nest is one and one half inches in diameter. Hey guys, so I hope you guys did okay. I'm really excited to see what you did, and I'm sorry that that was a little bit long, but I hope that you enjoyed it. I did a lot of detailed work in this one, and um, if you stuck with me, I think you'll be pleased. I think it will look really good when we're all done okay. So um, we'll do our coloring next week, um, but please go ahead and send me your images. I'd love to see your drawings, and um, stay tuned for the coloring portion, okay? You guys have a good week, and I'll see you next time, okay?